Matthew 1, verse 18 to 25. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a a just man, um, and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, uh, your wife, for, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. So all, so all this was done, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall, uh, shall be with child, and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated, God with us. Then Joseph, being aroused from, a dream, from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him and took to him his wife and did not know her till she had brought forth their firstborn son and, she was, and he was called and he called his name Jesus. I, this time of the year we see those beautiful postcard pictures of Christmas, don't we? A nice clean picture of Christmas. It's how most of us see it. We see those little mangers everywhere. And like I said, it's peaceful and calm. And, and there's a delightful charm around this, these pictures that we get. But I wonder, is that really how it is? Is that really how it was? In some ways, I think we've desensitized the Christmas message so much. We've, we've taken away, we've made it so clean. In fact, we've done that to the cross as well. We've made it so neat and clean that it almost misses the message that it is meant to give us. In some ways, we made it so pretty that it doesn't actually say so much. We sing the nice songs. We sing songs, uh, all is calm and all is bright. And we have these really uh, peaceful ideas of what that first Christmas looked like. But you know what? We dedicated a baby today, and I'm sure if I asked Nisha, um, if, if I asked any mum in this room, it, it doesn't matter whether you have a baby in a stable or whether you have a baby in a hotel room or you have a baby in a palace or you have a baby at home. There's no such thing as a baby that never cries. Right? Can you throw into that picture a smelly stable and a bunch of noisy animals? Somebody's going to cry through the night. It may just be the dad, but somebody's going to cry. And then to add to all of that, now remember, Joseph and Mary were people just like us. They were normal people. Now can you imagine, that Joseph says to Mary, come let's go on this trip. He puts her on the back of a donkey. Who knows how far she was riding on the back of this donkey. They get to where they're going, and then she finds out Joseph didn't even take the time to book a hotel room. Can you imagine? No wife in her right mind is not going to give her husband a piece of her mind at that moment. You silly man, you could at least have booked a room for us. Come on, you've all done road trips. You don't have to be super spiritual here. So that first Christmas, I don't think that first Christmas was as beautiful as a postcard. I think there were some things in that first Christmas that was a little bit rough and and ready. Yeah, we have a young couple. Yeah, we have a, 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 a rough room that's not even much of a room. Yeah, we have a cold night. No friends or family around. We, we don't have support structure around us. And all you have to put the baby in is a, is a feeding trough. That's a bit of a rough picture, isn't it? That is a, a messy Christmas. That is the kind of Christmas that we don't see on Hallmark. Enjoy this Christmas. <laughs> and then you ask the question, well, why then? Why was Jesus born in a manger? Why was he born in a stable? And it is a good question. And so we go to the book of Luke, and we find Luke gives a pretty simple answer. 
He doesn't criticize. He doesn't point fingers. He doesn't blame. He doesn't appoint. Uh, uh, he doesn't tell the innkeeper is a bad guy. He doesn't say any of those things. He just says the reason that they had the baby in the stable was there was no room in the inn. That's just the way it is. And sometimes that's just the way it is. Sometimes in life, you wish you were living in a palace. You wish everything was working out. You would like everything to be perfect. You would love everything to fit nicely in shape. But the, sometimes that's just the way it is. That's life. So is your Christmas a little messy? Do you have a bit of a messy Christmas from time to time? You've got a few drunk relatives show up when you didn't expect them. A few disagreements with the husband or the wife that you weren't planning on having. Nothing as difficult at Christmas as a husband and a wife arguing. Maybe some misunderstanding between a boyfriend and a girlfriend that just sort of spills over the whole festivities. Maybe you've got a few messy animals in the house and they're stinking up the place. Maybe you, your Christmas is one of those that you have to walk on eggshells because if you say the wrong thing at the wrong time to the wrong person, somebody's going to get offended, somebody's going to get upset. You're just going to have to walk on eggshells. Or maybe your messy Christmas is one of those where there's empty seats around the table because everybody just doesn't get along and I'm not going to go if so-and-so is going. You've got all of that going on. So, is your Christmas maybe a little bit more like a stable, a little bit less like a postcard? If that is so, this message is for you. You need a mercy Christmas. You see, we like a Merry Christmas because Merry Christmas is joy and celebration. It's a big smile on our face and we're having a party. That's say Merry Christmas. But for most of us, we need a mercy Christmas. God, let me just get through this Christmas. <laughs> I see. I'm in good company. But mercy is God's perfect gift of Christmas, isn't it? Mercy is God's perfect gift of Christmas. When you make the Christmas story too clean and too beautiful, you actually take away the reason God sent Jesus in the first place because we are a miserable bunch without Him. The whole reason that Jesus was sent is we live in a stable and it gets a bit messy without Jesus. Hmm. Hmm. So I decided to look at Joseph a little bit, and I'm not going to take a lot of time. It's not a long message. Maybe it could be. So for the next eight hours, oh, no. I was looking at Joseph, and you know, in the, in, the, in the story, we so easily focus on Mary. I mean, we focus on Jesus, but we focus on Mary as sort of a hero in the story, and, and that's okay, it's okay, and a lot of the messages we hear is always about Mary, but I thought about Joseph this week, and I thought, you know, Joseph is always sort of just in the background. Mary gets all the highlights, she gets all the, the, the accolades, of, oh, she made a great decision, she accepted the baby, she was going to do all of this, and, and Joseph sort of just in the back, back, just saying, I'm still here. But you know, Joseph, though, Joseph's story is pretty amazing. Can you put yourself in Joseph's shoes for a moment? I mean, just think about what happened. Joseph, your fiancé, that beautiful, pure maiden that you are planning to marry, the one that is just the, the woman of your dreams, you, you spend your life with, you're going to have all of these adventures with the greatest thing that you've always dreamt about, that wonderful fiancé of yours. Well, she was found to be pregnant. Can you imagine Joseph? His whole face falls. What are you saying? Oh, and of the Holy Spirit. Right. Now, I've, been a, I've been a pastor a long time. I've done counseling for a long time. And I, I've heard a few immaculate uh, conception stories in my time. But I guarantee you there's still only one Jesus story. Amen. 
Joseph, your fiance is found to be pregnant of the Holy Spirit. Merry Christmas. <laughs> it's not really the kind of Christmas story you'd want, is it? It's not the kind of story you'd, you'd be saying, oh, I'm happy about this. But I love that Joseph is such an excellent example to us. He's such a great opportunity for us to learn something about God. It says that he didn't react. He didn't jump or fly off the handle. He didn't spit the dummy. It says that he considered. He took time and considered what is going on here. And so I've got three quick questions I want to deal with this morning. Because, you, you know, if Joseph wanted to, he could have just left her. He had every right to, legally and otherwise. Nobody would have blamed him. Said, Joseph, you did the right thing. How many of us today would say to a Joseph, oh, you did the right thing. It wasn't your baby. So where does your faith end? Where does your faith end? What, at what point do you say, I don't have faith anymore? At what point do you say, that's as far as I go? At what point do you draw the line and say, I can believe God, but that's too far. I can't go there. Where does your faith end? If God wanted to birth a Jesus miracle in your life today, and it would turn your whole world upside down, and it would be completely unusual, crazy, out of the, the scope of what is normal and what is natural and what you think uh, you have planned for and set your goal for and set your life for, what would you do? Now, I'm sure that Joseph didn't feel it. I'm, I'm, I'm almost convinced with all of my heart to say to you today that Joseph didn't feel it. He didn't feel over happy when he heard the news. His feelings in that moment must have been a mess. Come on, let's be real. I mean, getting news like that, you're not going to say happy, happy, happy day. It's not, it wasn't a happy, happy day from Joseph's perspective because he had all of this planned out. He had his life set. He had a, a position in society. He had a status. He had all of these things. And, and now he's, he's put in a position where he's got to change everything because of something that God's doing. See, most people only have faith and obey God and are faithful when they feel like it. When it feels like God, oh, that feels like God. What if it doesn't feel like God, but you know it is? What do you do then? What do you do then? He did ask a lot of questions, but in some way, somewhere, God touched his heart. And that hope, that revelation came. You know, many people never find their blessing and fulfillment and significance in life. Because they spend all of their time following their feelings around. You know, following your feelings will never lead you to places of significance. Never lead you to places of blessing. Because your feeling will, will always lead you to the opposite direction of where you need to be going. You know, we have, we have the truth. We have the gospel. We know where we should be going. And, and you know why we need a mercy Christmas? I'll tell you why we need a mercy Christmas. Because we are all Mary. We are all Mary in some way or another. We are all a messy old bride. We're all a, a spotless, a, 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 sp a dirty and, and messed up bride. We're, we're all in some way come into the, this relationship with Jesus and we, we're praying and believing that Jesus will be like Joseph to say, come, I will receive you. We all need a mercy Christmas ourselves. But what if I told you that your struggle today could be your setup for tomorrow, your success for tomorrow? You see, we read Joseph, we read the story about Joseph, and we say, oh, Joseph, you should have just done this, you should have just done that. It's, but we got, the, we got the advantage of hindsight. We know the story. Joseph didn't know the story. He didn't know how it's going to turn out. He didn't know what the end of the story is going to be. All he knew is, Mary is pregnant, an angel is speaking to me, this is pretty crazy stuff. Joseph, God is going to send a Messiah to save the world. Yay! 
Joseph, you're going to be part of what God's doing. Double yay. Joseph, you're going to get to name him Jesus. Triple yay. And then, bang, a flash of light, brilliant light breaks out of heaven. And a seven-foot muscular man with fire in his eyes and arms of steel comes jumping out. Here I am, Joseph. See, God could have done that. And that's how most people thought the Savior would come. But instead, what Joseph finds is a young girl with a baby in her arms. Joseph. What, Lord? What are you saying? Yes. Now you take her, Joseph. And you protect her. And you cover her. And you provide for her. And and you bless them. And you do everything within your power. You take care of my story. But God, it's not my baby. It's not my problem. It's not what I want. God, what is mine? What if God gave you a seed and said, everything you've always dreamt, everything you've always wanted, everything I've promised you is contained in this seed, but you have to plant it and bring it to harvest before you can get what I have promised you. See, what if today Jesus is waiting to birth a miracle in your life, but you're not willing to take the baby. You're not willing to start at the beginning. You're not willing to walk the road. You know, you, you, it's too much. It's too messy. And you know what? That's the problem we have. That's the, that's the issue we have in the world today. And the problem is one word called divorce. The word divorce says, I, I want to be separated from that. That's too much for me to handle. I cannot cope with that. It's too much. I'll walk away. What if we did that with everything that God sent our way? It's too messy. It's too difficult. I won't want to deal with that, and I just walk away. Because ultimately, that was the challenge that Joseph was facing. Do I accept my destiny? Do I accept the call that's on my life? Or do I walk away and say, this is just too much. I can't cope with this. Don't fall too in love with your version, your version of the future. Don't fall too in love with your dream of how you think things will go. Because sometimes we fall so in love with that that we don't hear when God is calling us to a different destiny. God says, Joseph, I need you to take this. This is the greatest thing your life will ever do. It will change the world. It will save everybody. No, no, God, I wanted this. I'm not looking there. I'm staying this way. What if that's how we take on the gift of Christmas? And my last thought, whose mess is it? Whose mess is it? See, Christmas is God stepping into humanity. Christmas is your world. Christmas is your mess. God made the decision to step into our world. God made the decision to be birthed into our world. He made a decision to come and walk on our ground and to breathe our air and say to us, your problems I will take from you. You see, we spend all of our time trying to find somebody to blame or or something to blame or some way because this is how it is and that's how it is and this is why I am. And we've got all of these excuses and things. But at some point, you've got to say, this is my mess. Jesus, help me. God, I need you in my life. It's my mess. I need you. You see, your mess can be your compass or it can be your gravestone. Your mess can either be the thing that God uses to let you grow into something beautiful or wonderful, or it can be the tombstone that's over your life, and he never survived this. She never survived this. Christmas is a wonderful opportunity for us to say, hey, God, I need you to be birthed in my life again. I need you to be birthed in my circumstances again. This mess, I want it to be compassed. I want you to turn it around. You know what's important for you to realize? Jesus was born in a manger, in a stable, 
in a barn, in a pigsty. But he was still the son of a king. Your circumstances, your location, and your situation does not change who you are in God. You see, that's why we get stuck in our messy Christmases, because we let our circumstances define our identity when our Father has already identified who we are in Christ. See, Jesus was born in a stable, but he wasn't an animal. You may be born in a mess, but you are not defined and identified by the mess that you're in. You need a mercy Christmas. Your family needs a mercy Christmas. And that's my message for you this Christmas day. Well, it's not Christmas day yet, but it's Christmas. Maybe you're looking at Christmas and you say, I can't do this Christmas. It's too much. It's too messy. And the thought is, let me divorce myself. Let me divorce myself from what I have. But maybe God is saying... Let me birth in you something of grace, of mercy, of hope that will change the world. You see, Jesus came to save that which is lost. And he had to be born in a manger to show us that he's not above, beyond, or out of touch with our mess. And our circumstances. So this Christmas, can I encourage you and challenge you? Open your arms. And be like Joseph. Say, God, this makes no sense to me. God, this messes with my plans. This messes with my dreams. This messes with my finances. This messes with my sense of common sense. This messes with everything that I can think of. But God, I am willing to let you... Bring Mary into my mercy. Bring joy into my situation. If you do that, I promise you, this Christmas will be different if you let it. You see, Joseph let it. Joseph could have said, well, Mary, I'll give you a few dollars every month. You take care of the baby. I'll get you a place to stay. Uh, I'll take care of all of those things for you. And you will never have to worry about anything again, but then went and lived somewhere else. But he said, no. Like you said, be it unto me. So, Lord, I'm saying, I'll take this as mine. It's my mess. But I'm happy to see your glory in it. Amen? Amen. Would you think about that? It's a week before Christmas. Would you think maybe today that your Christmas, if you were just a little bit more like Joseph, what would, what would be different in your home? And in your circumstances. You know, we made Christmas very neat and tidy. But it wasn't. It was messy. We've made the cross very neat. 